We have some things in our life, I believe, that hinder our zeal. Now, you remember that time when you were saved, however long ago it was, when you were just, and you couldn't wait to tell whoever you came into contact with, and, yeah. well, you were on fire, just, I mean, there was nothing that could stop you. You were ready to pick up a squirt gun and charge the gates of hell. Man. <laughs> See, yes, remember that. Right. What has caused that to fail in our life? And I, I think, we can, think we can point some things out <clears throat> from the story here of the report brought back from Canaan Lane. We can point some things out from the story that will help us point out the zeal hindering things in our life. We see that there was a difference between the men that came back and brought that report. We, we all know that the children saw the 12 men went to spy in Canaan, 10 were bad and 2 were good, right? I, I never try to sing it because I always mess it up. <laughs> it's horrible. I'm awful at children's songs. But we know the story, we know the songs, we, we're familiar with the whole passage. But I want you to see the, the fear and hear the words yeah, of the report. Yeah, right. It's important to the message this morning. I think there are some things that caused a difference in the ten men versus the two. That difference primarily was a loss of zeal. You're right. Yeah. Think about right. this. They saw the same miracles wandering through the wilderness. Right. Their parents very probably had been brought out of miraculously out of Egypt. Yeah, right. uh, they had seen people die falling into gaping holes in the earth. I mean, they'd seen some amazing things from God that had been provided for miraculously by a holy God. They'd seen a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day lead them through the wilderness. I mean, they'd been under the same teachings, the same priests, seen the same exact things, but somehow the 12 men, in the, men that went into the promised land for to spy it out went in with zeal and only two came back out still possessing yeah. zeal. Amazing. Yeah, come on. God. How had 80% lost their zeal? How in the world does that happen? Here's, here's how it happens. I believe, first of all, I believe that they lost their zeal. We lose our zeal for the work of God when we, number one, forget that God is with us and not the enemy. Come on! Yeah. You remember that God's on our side. God's on our side. You see, the children of Israel looked at the size of their enemy and they forgot about the size of a holy God in heaven. Right, right. They saw the giants and the walled cities, and you know they brought back a fearful report. When we focus on the size of our obstacles in our way, and not on our God, our zeal melts away and falls off. You will not have zeal when you're focused on the size of your obstacles. I want to ask you some questions. Think real hard about this. What do we do when we see all the false teaching that we have to overcome? What do we do when even our own brethren are stepping off into apostasy. Yeah, on, right, right. Right. No. What do we do when we contemplate the size of the population? Seven billion people that we're charged to evangelize. We're commanded to reach them. What we must do, what we must do, when we forget that God's with us and not the enemy, we must, number one, remember the power of this perfect book. Remember the power of God. It will not fail. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yeah. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, the Bible of itself says, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? I'm going to preach the truth. The Bible says that the light reproves darkness. The light will reprove the darkness. All we've got to do is focus in on the truth. That's all we have to do. Remember the power of the word of God. Remember, secondly, that the king is with us yeah. and not the enemy. Yeah. The king of glory is with us and not the enemy. Matthew 28, 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, say those words with me, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Yeah. Amen. Man, I am so thankful for that promise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that promise is given to me. Yeah. That promise is given to me. Yeah. I'm going, and because I go as a witness, I have the promise of God that he is with me wherever I go. Yes, when we're obedient to God in our daily lives, when we've lost a little bit of our zeal, all we have to do is remember that, hey, if we can just step back in line, just start obeying again, just start doing right again, and God is on our side. He's on our side when we obey. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as ye have. For ye have said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Can I challenge you with something? Are you content? When all you have is God. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Content when all you have is God. Wow. That'll challenge your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that right. enough said. Wow. I think we have we forget that God's with us and not the enemy. Secondly, I believe many times we've lost our zeal 
when we have a greater fear of mankind than of God. Right. You know, the children of Israel, verses 1 through 3 of chapter 14, they failed to think what God did to Egypt, where they wanted to return back to, that place that was all of a sudden so lovely to them again. They forgot what God did to Egypt. He could have just as easily done to them. Right. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. right. He caused their city to be spoiled, drowned their army in the Red Sea. I mean, my goodness, he could have just as easily done it to the people of Israel. Right. Right. Yeah. I think it'd be astonishing to hear the full range of people that we as mankind fear rather than God. Wow. I think among them would be maybe our parents, maybe our spouses, our friends, maybe your children. Oh, God, help you if you fear your children more yeah. than God. Uh, maybe your friends, maybe professional <laughs> associates or coworkers, or maybe a particular denomination. Yeah. But, you know, scriptural warnings are very clear against this. We ought to fear God more than man. The Bible says in Luke 12, Luke 12, 4 through 5, it says, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. I'll forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. You say unto, I say, yea, I say unto you, fear him. You see, I'm going to a place that, thankfully, the unrest and the, the political, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the political uh, hardships that were going on that caused people to be throwing bombs into, or throwing grenades into funeral parties back with the, uh, the problems of the IRA, right. uh, those no longer exist anymore. There's just political tension now. Thank, I'm thankful for that. Right. But you know, that wouldn't change the fact that I'm still headed to Ireland, even if it was still dangerous. Right. It doesn't change the fact that people are still going to communist China where they can be killed right. for preaching the gospel. It doesn't change right. the fact that the people in the 1040 window where it's the most dangerous to reach those people, but they're the most needy yeah. and the most unreached, doesn't change the fact that they still need to be reached. Right. So what do we do when we think about that? When, when mankind puts fear into our heart more than God does? We must be not afraid of them that all they can do when they've done everything they can do, all they can do is take our life. Yeah, that's right. I say, what are you going to do? Threaten me with heaven? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm yeah. headed to a place that's better than this. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid when all that's done by the, this old world yeah. is just taking your life. Yeah. Yeah. It could come to that one day. Yeah. It could come to that in my lifetime. It really could. I believe that. I believe it. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of dying for your God. Because God is the one who has power to kill and then yep. cast into hell. Yeah. Don't forget that. Secondly, we must remember that the challenge uh, regarding fearing mankind more than God, that it is the whole duty of man to fear God. Uh, it's the whole, that's all we're commanded to do. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, it sums it all up. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah. For this is the whole duty of man. Yeah. But here's where it gets real personal. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right. God sees it when we lose our zeal. Yeah. He really does. Right. He notices. Right. He, re he recognizes loss of zeal in our hearts and minds. And boy, we need to remember that that's our whole duty to fear God more than man. And then thirdly, I think with regarding this fearing mankind more than God, is we're going to be judged someday. And I think that judgment for some is going to be sheer terror. Yes, sir. I'm ashamed of any lack of zeal in my life. And I oh, lack it at times. No. I really do. I'm not perfect. I'm, really, I'm not. I'm not trying to get you to think that I'm something I'm not. I lose my zeal on occasion. And boy, we need, we, we need to remember that 2 Corinthians 5, 10 through 11 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we're made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Church, church, we're going to be judged someday. Yes, sir. And that ought to drive us to get the work done that we need to get done. 